Well, it's been a volatile first half of the year for your money so far. In two weeks, the Federal Reserve, well, they're going to be at it again with another possible rate hike to deal with inflation. So what would that mean for the stocks in your portfolio and your money in general? You know, David, my concern, though, looking at that last jobs report is that wages are up, going up, but they're going up slower. Uh, we learned from the uh, small business uh, NFIB that uh, they're done. They, they're not going to spend much more on CapEx or, or hiring. Uh, and you got to be concerned about the so-called lag effect. The Fed has done a lot. They've said they've actually been on a record pace. How concerned are you that it may go too far? Well, I'm far more concerned about that than the other. I think the idea that they would keep raising rates because too many people have jobs is absurd. It's not only bad monetary policy, it's immoral economics. Jobs do not create inflation, Charles. People having jobs produces goods and services. It adds to supply and it brings down inflation. And the, your point that the rate of growth of wages has slowed, that's not only not good for lower income workers, but it's the exact opposite of what these Phillips curvers constantly predict. There has been no wage price spiral. And in fact, if you take out the lag in shelter inflation, they have about a two and a half percent inflation rate right now. So I just don't believe that the Fed is uh, keeping up with the times. And I think they are going to do exactly what you said, tighten too far and end up hurting ongoing CapEx and business investment. But with that in mind, I mean, they've got 500 PhDs over there. Uh, it's got Lee. Uh, maybe, maybe they don't go to uh, go out and get out of the building much. But, uh, you know, they talk all the time. There's an army of them always talking and they try to jawbone the market. That was fine. You can consider that a tool. Uh, but I, I feel like this Fed, the Powell Fed, has bl blew it on inflation. And I think they're trying too hard and they're going to blow it again this time as well. Uh, David, though, through it all, the market's hung in there pretty good, though. Yeah, markets always trade in the long term around earnings, and they have to look through a lot of noise along the way. They have to look through the noise of debt ceiling discussions that are dumbfounding and how stupid they are. And they have to look through a lot of other volatility because the news cycle will always have different things. But, you know, Charles, the issue Rebecca brought up, I believe, is the important one and we have a precedent for, and that's Japan. When you get too much monetary policy, too much fiscal policy trying to fix things, it ultimately leads to downward pressure on growth. That can last for decades, not months. So for everyone who's hand-wringing over this period of inflation, which had, came from a lot of different policy errors, I think you're looking at decades of deflationary pressures because ultimately we have too much government trying to do too many things. That indebtedness is the problem. And unlike the financial crisis in 08, which was households that were over-levered, this is governments that are over-levered. And it's a totally different animal. Japan is really the story I think people need to worry about. Yeah, that's a great, uh, great one to study.